Hi, John Ludi here, J-O-H-N-L-U-D-I.com. And I have decided, after having moved back into the yurt full time, uh, to augment my, my solar uh, setup. Um, I had bought a single 15-watt panel from Harbor Freight back in the fall, and it just doesn't entirely cut it. Uh, despite the fact that I decided to abandon my notions of uh, of uh, having either a small scaled down uh, uh, sewage treatment plant here or a meth lab, uh, but despite these changes, I still have needs. Don't we all have needs? And my needs currently are my netbook, which is about 15 watts of power um, usage, and some uh, LED lights, and uh, powering my droid. It's really mostly what I use it for, but still the uh, single panel wasn't really cutting it. So I had advertised uh, a I want solar panels on a local uh, email list here. And the response that I got was from a guy named Robert, who actually coincidentally had three more of the exact same panels. And um, here are they, two of them anyway. And these are, you know, it's kind of an attractive, low-profile little package. Uh, yeah, it's like, I think they retail at about 189 bucks for the three panels, a little kind of mounting grid that I think comes with it, and uh, a charge controller. I have my own charge controller here. Um, tested all three of these new panels, new old panels, with my multi-tester, uh, and they all were outputting quite nicely. Uh, didn't need to test the wattage. There is a way to test wattage with one of these that occasionally involves uh, setting it to the wrong setting and having them explode. So I decided not to do that. Um, but I think it's pretty reliable that these will output about 15 watts minimum. Um, if you're looking at these particular panels from Harbor Freight, uh, you will probably notice that they're a little bit constrained in terms of mounting options. In fact, uh, if you're not going with the little grid that they have, I think the mounting options are pretty close to none. But what I think I'm going to do here is they've got these little movable guys that probably have a name, but I don't know what it is. And there's just enough room for me to put some uh, uh, nylon uh, rope through, or nylon thread, or whatever. So I'm actually going to do that and uh, put them just flush on top of the yurt and lead them all through this charge controller, which has a, uh, it's got a 7 amp max load, and <clears throat> the three solar panels, according to the manual, uh, it looks like they top out at about 4 amps combined, so I think extrapolating that, that I should never really come near 7 amps, but we'll find out if this thing like blows up on me and burns the yurt down when I'm not around. So I'm basically going to take care of this right now. I will spare you the gory details, but I'll let you see the finished product, and we can see how quick it uh, it does its job on my marine batteries or on my small gel batteries. So, won't that be boring? Hey, <laughs> I'm back. Uh, so those of you who have known me for any duration of time know that I have a fine personal tradition of being innovative or, <laughs> from a different perspective, screwing things up. And uh, that's what I'm about to do here because I'm looking at my um, placement here and it's a little too constrained for uh, putting up four panels. So what I'm going to do is basically take this panel and tie off to the bottom of that panel using this nylon cord which is um, rated to support the weight of one large donkey apparently. So it should hold up if I noose, if I <laughs> circle through the bottom uh, feet of that panel. Uh, and one of the reasons I'm doing it in this kind of ghetto fabulous jerry-rigged way is 
because, as you note, there is a blue tarp covering a bunch of reflectics, which is my temporary winter setup, which should go away in about a month once the landscape stops looking like this. So basically I'm going to have panel, panel on either side and a, you know, and this panel lying across the bottom. And then I'm going to take my fish tape, which is an indispensable tool for anybody who wants to do anything ever. Uh, and I'm going to fish the power cable up through the bottom of the dome. All of which is quite boring, but, you know, for those people who are putting together an assembly like this, um, you know, just a few little things that you might want to consider. So, um, although I doubt there are very many people out there who would do things like I do in such a whimsical and nonsensical manner. Uh, so we'll be back once I have this all connected. Hey, <laughs> I guess we can file this under, oh my god, it actually kind of works. Um, I, uh, because of the curvature of the yurt and my southern exposure, I think I've actually kind of maximized uh, inadvertently the output of my solar panel configuration on here. Uh, <laughs> check this out. I have morning, afternoon, and uh, evening going on with these, so that's kind of cool. Just thought I would point that out. Complete accident, but, you know. Uh, happy accident, I suppose. Uh, back soon. Okay, well, everything is, uh, everything is installed, um, wired together, <laughs> sort of, hopefully, temporarily. Um, I've got it kind of hodgepodge together, and I'm hoping that the electrical tape that the Yurt Poltergeist, uh, waylaid is actually electrical tape and not something less than electrical tape. Because that could be bad. Because I actually got a shock out of this when I had the uh, when I had the charge controller disconnected from the battery. Uh, so that was interesting. So there's, uh, in theory, there's 60 watts coursing through the veins of these wires leading into the charge controller, which does not seem to be freaking out right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is take it off of the large marine battery and hook it up to this um, small gel battery. And let's see what Mr. Gel Battery has to say. Uh, gel Battery is telling me that it's 12.31 uh, charged right now. So, you know, it's, it's a little undercharged. It's not horribly undercharged. So let's see what it takes to get the charge controller to read full. See how long it takes to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's reading 12.31. Uh, sometimes it just reads 666, and I can't get it to stop. I can't get it to stop. It will not. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to do this, and, uh, what you won't see is, uh, I'm going to do this while naked and standing in a bucket of water. So, we'll be back soon. So, uh, <laughs> I decided to, uh, give that little battery just about an hour because I wanted to charge one of the larger ones and within an hour it seems to uh, now that the battery settled a bit seems like it's gotten to about uh, I think it was 12.56 uh, so still a bit under charge but you know not bad for an hour or so on an extremely gloomy and overcast day so uh, and uh, it's uh, it's sleeting on me now so I'm going to go back inside and, uh, and uh, do stuff with all that power so there it is. Bye.